KC2 IRV back again in a very noisy tower shelter. Um, I'm up at my repeater site doing some experimentation. I figured uh, people would like to see the actual repeater I have on the air and wing gap on UHF connected All Star. So, right now, um, I'm actually doing a little test. But before I get into that, I'll show you uh, what I have for, uh, for the equipment. And this is it right here. That's the duplexer up there. Um, Kenwood 100 watt amplifier, a Kenwood TKR 840 repeater, and a Duracom 70 amp power supply. Uh, the Raspberry Pi that runs the uh, All Stars there, along with a Yuri. I was using a uh, one of my um, little homemade boards before, so but I had this Yuri hanging around. I figured I would just use that uh, for now. Uh, anyhow, anywho, I've got uh, two batteries. They're two 35 amp hour batteries, giving me 70 amp hours of, of, of run time. My router, so just a just a small Netgear router, and then I have uh, it's a TP Link uh, model MC 100 CM fiber to Ethernet media converter, and this is used to connect to the uh, the ISP's internet connection up here. Uh, and that was required to connect to use a fiber link so that I would isolate my equipment in case it ever got hit by lightning and I wouldn't I wouldn't toast their switch. So, and I also have a switch down here for future use. So, uh, an HP ProCurve managed switch. So, what I'm doing today is uh, I'm actually. Uh, testing out a GPS unit, a GPS uh, Disciplined Oscillator, or short DPS, uh, GPS DO, and um, I got it off of eBay, it cost uh, 169 bucks total, from uh, a Chinese ham who manufactures them, and um, they work quite well. Uh, I just turned it on about an hour ago, they take a couple of hours to really settle in um, for the oven to heat up, it uses an oven controlled oscillator. Uh, made by a Siliquartz. But it's actually a very good oscillator. And then it uses a small GPS antenna. So right now, you can serial into the unit. It puts out uh, NMEA data, standard serial, 9600 baud. You can see all the satellites I'm seeing. It says right down in the corner, I've seen 11 satellites. And uh, it's, you know, looking at my, there's, you know, the location of, the, of where I am currently. and. So it's got a good solid lock. And the funny part is, is the antenna is right there inside the building. <laughs> so it's got a very sensitive receiver. I, I've done some testing with it over the past couple of days and it works very well. So um, let's go around to the back to see how I have it hooked up. Oop, I'm tripping over a cable here. Here we go. There it is. That's the oscillator. Uh, it's a little dark. Uh, let me see if I can shed some light on it. There we go. Focus on it. Come on. Yeah, that's a little better. So that's the oscillator. Um, it's got a one pulse per second, 10 megahertz output. Uh, SMA female GPS antenna port. Um, runs off at of 12 volts. It comes with a little wall wart. And I have it connected to the reference input uh, on the back of my repeater. That's the reference input. Well, I did. This is actually the cable. That goes to the reference input, which is right there. But I want to show you, you know, what it does. So essentially, it's still walking itself in, but with the oscillator inside uh, the TKR 840 free running, uh, you see the reference light is green, that means it's running off its internal reference. Uh, it's a 6.8 megahertz reference, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, so anyway, I'm listening to it on my uh, service monitor. The service monitor actually has a pretty good stability oscillator, pretty good high stab oscillator in it. But for better accuracy, I actually have it connected to an on-site uh, Spectrocom GPS reference just to uh, make sure that this is completely accurate. So if I key up the, uh, the repeater through the test port, and you can look at the frequency error on the screen, and I'll take a moment to settle in. 
But essentially, I am low by 546 hertz, which um, for a 25 kilohertz uh, channel bandwidth is within spec. So I'd like it to be a little bit better than that, but it's well within spec. So um, in the future, I'm going to be simulcasting my UHF repeater using All Star and using the uh, the, ra uh, the radio thin client model. You know, Thin client module, sorry, known as the RTCM, and uh, you need a one pulse per second and a 10 megahertz reference for a transmit site. If for just a receive site, you need the one pulse per second. The one pulse per second is there to synchronize the audio. The 10 megahertz reference is to make sure that the repeater's um, transmitter is on frequency uh, within. You want it ideally within a couple of hertz, you know, two three hertz. Um, so, minimum for that, I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head, I think you need, at UHF you need something like, uh, 10 to the negative 8th, it's either 10 to the negative 8th or 10 to the negative 9th, I've, uh, bench tested this GPS oscillator at 10 to the negative 12th for accuracy, so it's more than accurate enough. Um, once it's locked, it's wa a little wandering right now. It takes a couple of hours for it to settle in. So anyway, let's connect the reference from that GPS around back here. Uh, where's my cable? There it is. There's my cable. So let's connect it. What'll happen is the LED on the front will go red. That means it is seeing a valid 10 megahertz clock on the reference port. So now, when I key the repeater up, let's do this and settle in. Oh, looks like it's really walked its way all the way in. So, essentially, my service monitor is referenced to a Spectrocom uh, Secure Sync GPS oscillator. Oh, and my transmitter is referenced. To a to my little uh, Chinese eBay special oscillator, and essentially my service monitor can hardly tell the difference between the frequencies. So um, at one kilohertz, though. So let's see. So this might actually might show a little bit of a difference here. It might be a couple of hertz off. Got to settle out. Yep, okay. 0.4 hertz. Yep, it's still wandering around a little bit. That's the GPS unit that I just got is being con consistently bumped around by the, uh, uh, by the GPS, you know, by the timing from the GPS. So as you can see, it wanders a little bit. So that will get closer and closer and closer the longer it's on. So let me unkey. So yep, it uh, so far it's been a great little unit. I've torn it apart. It's got high quality components, good construction. I'll put a link to eBay where you can grab one. Very sensitive receiver. You can actually use a passive antenna on it. You don't have to use an active antenna. Has the capability of. Uh, powering a 3.3 volt active antenna or a 5 volt active antenna. You have to change a resistor inside. Um, and it uh, tested over a couple of days and it's been extremely stable. So it seems to really, really work well. One thing that does happen is when uh, the one pulse per second is not derived from the unit itself. It's not, um, you know, they didn't do like a divide by N on the 10 megahertz output of the oscillator to give you the one pulse per second. The one pulse per second is directly derived from the GPS. So if you lose GPS signal, your one pulse per second goes away. So it's a little bit of a bummer, um, but for $169, they get an oscillator that is accurate down to 10 to the negative 12. By itself, um, the spec sheet on the Oscilocorts oscillator is accurate to believe it's 10 to the negative 7th on the lowest model you can get. Um, but the holdover is very, very good. Um, it'll, it'll hold over for quite a while. 
um, held it over for about two, three days, and uh, it stayed it stayed well within. I haven't tested it to see how far, how long it'll hold over to the point where it starts sliding out of frequency. I'm imagining probably probably over the course of a week it'll begin to move enough to make it uh, to give you some you know simulcast uh, tearing on the air. So. Um, but of course, at that point, you know, if you don't have one pulse per second, your audio is not going to be synchronized. So, you really want to get it fixed quickly. But um, so yeah, it, it comes with this little antenna, little this little GPS antenna. It's got a magnet on the back. I just have it stuck here on my uh, on my thing, on my uh, duplexer there. It comes with a fairly long lead. And like I said, inside I'm getting I'm in a block building with a metal roof, and I'm getting a. Uh, Oh, 12 satellites right now. So, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, you really need about four of them until it's really happy. You know, until it's uh, got a... Since it's got a GPS lock. So, um, I believe this unit is uh, kind of a must for someone. It's not that big if you look at the size of my hand. It's not a very big unit. So it's a it's a must, um, in my opinion, for bench testing and um, you know having it hooked to your service monitor make, and making things as accurate as possible. And if your transmitter has a 10 megahertz reference input, I would definitely get one of these. You know, um, not all transmitters will automatically switch between their internal and external reference. So for some reason that would ever fail. The Kenwood TKR840s do automatically switch. So, um, that's about it. I'm, I'm very, very happy with the way this works. So, I'm going to uh, probably purchase another one and continue on my simulcast project. I'm going to see how the RTCMs work. Fortunately, the documentation on the R RTCM and the, uh, the apt voter. Um, module in All-Star is kind of like a state secret, it seems. I had to do a lot of digging to find uh, the nitty-gritty on how to set that up. So, but I did find it. And I'm going to post I'm going to post it on, uh, if anybody's familiar with the Vermont All-Star forums, which uh, I'm a member of, which I support those guys, and uh, they're a great bunch of guys. If you ever want to connect in, they're... Uh, their node number is uh, for their hub is uh, 42353. Um, it's a great bunch of guys. So, um, that's it for now. Uh, if you guys have any questions on my setup or any questions on All Star in general, I'll try my best to answer them. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not the know all, but uh, I have done a fair bit of tinkering. So uh, this is KC2IRV. Once again, you can email me at kc2irv.com, and uh, that'll be it for now. See you later in 73s.